Hey guys, hope you're all okay. I thought I'd use this opportunity to chat about the gear I use when I ride off-road. It's probably not an exciting video, but as I can't ride my bike, obviously, I thought it's a great opportunity to just chat about all the stuff I use. Obviously, this is just what I use. It doesn't mean it's right or wrong. You know, some people have a preference to Fox over Alpine Star or whatever, or Elite over, but that's up to you. But this is what I use for the sort of riding that I do. The sort of riding I do, local lanes. We do go to Wales, I've been a couple of times, as you've, you've seen in uh, some of my previous videos. I'll put a link to the last trip we did now in this video. If you guys at home are bored, nothing to do, watch that four part video. It's brilliant of us guys in Wales. It pretty much rained every day. We went and did some pretty cool stuff. But yeah, I don't race enduro, nothing like nothing too extreme. You know, the stuff in Wales, some of it is a bit technical. But my theory is with gear, get the best gear you can afford. You know, sometimes you do pay for the name on some of the gear, but some of the more expensive gear, I think the research that's gone into it's more than some of the cheaper gear, and it's probably a little bit safer too. So right guys, I'll run through this as quick as I can. If I start from the head and work down to the feet, that's probably, I've got some other things like the rucksacks, uh, sunglasses, bits and bobs that aren't that relevant, but I'll add them into this video anyway. So I think, yeah, let's start at the head and work our way down to the feet. That's probably the best idea. Right. Guys, one other thing before I chat about the gear, there's links in the description to a lot of the stuff on this table. Not everything, but most things, but it's obvious. If I tell you what it is, you can just search it on whichever website you use to buy your gear and you'll find it. But there's a lot of, uh, I think the gloves, uh, boots maybe, goggles, bits and pieces. There are links in the description. Right, so let's get started. So the first helmet I ever had was this KTM branded helmet. It's very light, just felt a bit flimsy. I did have the camera mount on the front there. It's just really noisy as well. Uh, there's not got much padding in it either. It's a bit, it's a bit cheap. It's about hundred pounds, so that kept me going for a while. Used that a couple of times in Wales, and it was absolutely fine. Right, so that was the KTM helmet. As I was getting into more enduro, enjoying it a lot more, I thought I need a better helmet. That isn't really cutting it. That one, so I went for the Supertech M8 Alpine Star helmet. It's just night and day compared to that helmet. It actually weighs the same. It doesn't. It's got such the, the padding is just it's just a quality helmet it's quieter it's more comfortable it's just oh, i love it absolutely the venting's brilliant on it there is a carbon version of this you can get it's about another hundred pounds more i didn't bother with that because this is so light anyway really light i think it's carbon kevlar i can't remember what it's, what it's actually made of but love it so that's my new helmet oh, it's just superb love it Again, with helmets, as everyone knows, it's what fits your head. Some people would prefer a elite helmet over that. Cause it's got a different shaped head, but I've got a normal shaped head, sort of slightly oval, I guess. But it, that fits me like a glove on my head, shall we say. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's my new helmet. Absolutely love it. Right, goggles. I first started off with these Fox Airspace goggles. And I think, yeah, they've got double glazed lenses in them. They're about... 30, 40 pounds, I think. But I found the visibility out of them quite restricted. I couldn't, it just, you feel very hemmed in with these. But they're a great goggle. Uh, I've got different lenses for them. As I said, the double glaze, they're never ever steamed up once in Wales. They've been in the rain, they've been superb. So I upgraded from those ones to my new Scott Prospect goggles, which you can see the difference in the aperture of the lens. There are far far bigger lens i think these are probably they've got the widest lens of any goggle on the market but oh they're they're amazing absolutely superb so, more comfortable what i do i don't know if you can see but i actually add a tear off every time i ride if, if it's mucky i add a tear off so i don't end up ruining the uh the lens because the lenses are expensive so i just add a tear a pack of tear offs are cheap so I add a tear off you know, if it gets mucky, I can take it off mid-ride, but it just comes in handy. It stops me wrecking the lens, and the visibility out of it is, is the same. So, but they're just, they're so comfortable. They've just got 
it's a better foam, they're better quality. These are over double the price of those Fox goggles, so they're a lot more expensive. A lot more expensive. I have got three different sorts of lenses. I've got these clear ones, and they're double glazed as well. So I can wear these in wet weather. These will be superb. Clear, double glazed. That's what you need. The sprays and that you get. And some of the lenses say anti, anti. Uh, anti-fog this and that but pff, doesn't work for me I always have double glaze lenses that's that seems to work for me what I have got are these I haven't tried them in Wales actually I've used them a couple of times on locally are these glasses sports glasses I actually wear them on my mountain bike but they've actually got my prescription glasses built into them they, they, they clip out and these come with four or five different lens types they're amazing so yeah, they're in really nice weather. They're, they're, they'll do the job on the bike. You know, they'll just they'll, they'll sit in there. But you can't beat a pair of goggles for protection, like 100%. That's what I think anyway. Wear goggles if you can. I think one of our mates got a stone hit him on the edge of his eye. He took his goggles off, and it's just it's not worth it. Not worth it at all. Right. So that's goggles. So Scott Prospect Fox Air Space. I'm sure they're called Air Space. And they've been uh, both been really, really good. Right, I don't bother with a neck brace. You know, some of the guys do run with them. I'm not too fussed about getting one. I just wear this little foam sort of Velcro neck protector. It stops your head flicking back and you end up with whiplash. It's just a little foam thing. It's cheap. But I wear that and it, it does stop my neck from flicking back. I, I crashed into a ditch a long time ago and I'd had whiplash for... for weeks so this this little thing needs, needs a wash is a bit grubby this little thing works well it does the job so i use that uh i've got a little neck buff ktm thing generic neck buff if it's a bit chilly right next before we go on to the uh jerseys and jackets and bits i'll go on to the gloves i've got these fox gloves i think they're called a fox titan i can't remember actually should know, but I can't remember. These are a bit old now, and the Velcro is starting to not work as well as it used to. I've got two pairs of these. I uh, can't find the other pair, they've disappeared. They're about 40 quid, but I love them because they've got a bit of armour. I don't like wearing just motocross gloves, uh, doing in the normal enduro I do in Wales and stuff. I like a little bit more protection. Uh, they're obviously not waterproof, but they're good. These are my waterproof gloves. I've got these in the sale. They're waterproof to a limit in rain for about an hour and then you're going to get wet hands. But again, you know, they've got a cuff on them, they've got armour, so they're armoured. And they do the job. But what I will say, guys, if you're riding the rain, not we have in Wales, wear uh, surgical gloves underneath your gloves and then that stops you getting wet hands. As wet as your gloves get, you don't get wet hands, so you're absolutely fine. Right, next I'll go on to knee protectors. I did start off with these Liat Leet, however you say it, knee protectors. But I actually wear these now on my e mountain bike. Yeah, they're good. They've got D3, D3, uh, D3O armour in them. And they were fine, but I thought I need to upgrade and get something a little bit better. So I've got these uh, Liat knee braces, and they are so, so comfortable. I can't, it, you don't even know you've got them on. They're absolutely brilliant. I'm not going full knee braces, I'm not doing that. For the sort of riding I do, I'm not splashing out the money on that. If you can afford them, go for them, but these are just so comfortable, and obviously it stops you hyperextending your knee the other way. So yeah, they, they're far, and they, they go into the boot fine. They sit just inside the boot, but mega comfortable. Can't recommend them enough. So much better than just normal knee protectors. Absolutely brilliant. Right. Next, body armour. I've got this Fox, I'm not sure, Fox Titan body armour. So I use this Fox, well, it's Titan Sport jacket it's called, but yeah. It's really, really comfortable, it's fully vented, it's got a massive back protector. But I am going to upgrade this, this is the one thing I'm going to change before I head off to Wales again. I'm going to go for probably a Liat or a Alpine Star body armour system, probably D3O armour, a bit more of a fitted version, something that protects your ribs because 
as good as this is, you have no rib protection. And as, as my mate Stu found out when he fell off when he was in America and punctured his lungs and cracked his ribs and all sorts, the rock just caught him in his ribs. And with these, there's no side protection. So I want to get something with a bit more rib protection. But end of the day, that, I've had that a year or two and it's been brilliant, but I am going to upgrade my body armour. And that was about £100. I think you've got to spend probably double that to get some better quality body armour. So, oh, what I remember, I'll probably forget. I've got these pants, shorts, whatever you want to call them, whichever part of the world you live in. They're KTM padded shorts. They've got a hip protector. They've got a bit for your cock six there. They've got the chamois bit in there for your, for your undercarriage. So they are super comfortable. I don't know how much they were. They may be about 40 pounds, I can't remember. But I wear these all the time, whichever trouser setup I'm wearing, I always wear these. I might have double hip protectors with the, some of the trousers I wear, but I'll show you those in a minute. But these shorts have been amazing, so comfortable. And just having this padded bit here, just, oh, I love them. So I, I ride in those all the time. I've got a couple of pairs of those. They've been brilliant. Chuck those down there. Right, next. Let's go to uh, some of the jerseys and trousers. I've got uh, Fox 360 jersey. Really vented. What us guys don't do, we don't ride in full enduro gear, as in full big jackets and big trousers, because we overheat. So whatever the weather, even the winter, I will wear motocross stuff like this, vented. Uh, with a thermal underneath, body armour obviously, and if it's cold, I put a waterproof jacket over the top. So I always wear this kind of jersey. And trousers, I wear these more in the summer, because they're so vented, they're brilliant. They're 360 as well, Fox. Problem with these obviously, there's no body armour in them at all. So you need to be wearing knee protectors, hip protectors with your uh, pants, uh, boxer short things underneath. But they're really nice and cool. Really, really comfortable. Yeah, love those. Absolutely love those. I've got a set here of, uh, covered in dirt, some black and white 180 Fox uh, jersey and trousers. But they're not as vented as the 360. So yeah, always wear motocross gear. And as I said, if it's wet, muddy, whatever, I put waterproofs over the top. That's what, that's my personal preference. I hate getting hot. I'd rather have layers on and some big jacket and trousers that you can't take off. I also have KTM jersey. I wear this in the winter a lot. It's actually really, really dirty for some reason. Don't know what's quite, what's, what's happened to this. Look, it's got <laughs> something on it. God knows. So I wear that. It's not vented, but in the winter, it's really warm because there's no vents in it. But in the summer, that you, I'll overheat in that massively. And trouser wise, in Wales, I've got these KTM trousers. They're waterproof to a level. Again, with re in really heavy rain, you're gonna get wet anyway, but in showers, these are really waterproof and they've got hip protectors built into them. And sort of knee protectors. Obviously I wear all my other gear underneath these and they go over the boots, whereas the other trousers that, that I just chatted about, they go in the boot. So these go over the boot, but I've ridden in Wales, I'll put a little clip now of us riding in Wales in the rain. We got soaked, but to be fair, I never got wet feet and I had these over, these are a bit dirty as well, I had these over my boots and they've been absolutely superb, but in the summer they're too hot, I have to wear my motocross gear because I just overheat in these, but I'm not sure what make these are, uh, sorry, I know they're KTM branded, but I'm not sure, what are they? doesn't say in there don't know anyway they're, they're really good trousers and they are waterproof to a level as everything is uh, oh this jacket it's a mountain warehouse jacket and I've ridden this in some serious stormy weather heavy rain on my, on my e-bike to work I've not worn up my dirt bike yet it's a large I'm about a medium so this fits over all my gear and it's it's about 30 quid and it's so waterproof so that will just that lives in my bag if we go anywhere and it might rain with my other waterproof trousers which are just basic waterproof trousers you wear on a push bike so I've got a random cap WP cap I keep it in if, I'm, if I stop and it's sunny I'll stop my baldy head getting burnt I'll wear that cap right 
Uh, next thing, boots. First off, oh god, he's heavy. These Fox Comp 5 boots, they're quite old school. They're more enduro based than motocross based. They've got quite strong grips. But you know what, I've, I've worn these loads. And in Wales, when it's super, super muddy and wet, we've been through rivers in our streams that are a good couple of feet deep. I've never once had wet feet when I've been wearing these. So they might not make them anymore, but they're Fox Comp 5. But they're superb, but all the, the, the paint's peeling off there and they're just a bit bashed up because I've worn them lows, but they're really comfortable, mega waterproof, a bit bulky, a bit heavy, but I love them. If the weather's ever bad, I will go to these, no question, over, over the other boots I'll show you in a minute. Right guys, the Comp 5 Fox boots were brilliant, super waterproof, super comfortable, just a bit heavy, a bit sort of clunky, a bit big. So I went on eBay and I found a pair of Fox Instinct boots that a guy only worn a couple of times. And I've only worn these probably a couple of times. I've worn these in Wales. And the, the, even the little, even the uh, adjusters are, are better quality. Yeah, they're a brilliant boot. Absolutely brilliant. They're, they're probably not quite as comfy as a Comp 5, probably less padding, but they're, they're a more focused boot, more a motocross based boot, as you can see by the sole. Not quite as much grip, but yeah, they're really comfortable. But one thing is they're not anywhere near as waterproof as the Comp 5s, no question. I've got wet feet in these really quickly in Wales. So in dry weather, dusty weather, whatever, I've got a bit more feel with the pegs through these, with the brake and the uh, and the gear shifter, because the Comp 5s are a little bit chunky on the toe. So I've got a bit more feel with these. They're a bit more of a narrow boot, but they are brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So love those. Ugh, chuck them over there. Right, that's it really clothing wise. One thing I will mention is rucksacks. What I normally run is my Krieger. This uh, R, I think it's an R15 Krieger. Uh, when we're out on the trails, I take all my camera gear, water, a towing st uh, strap, first aid kit. I'm not going to bore you with all that stuff now, but that's what I normally is. We always carry. Some of the guys that have certain tools that other guys haven't got, we always mix it up a little bit. So the Krieger's brilliant, super comfy, as everyone knows with Krieger, with the sort of quad lock sort of system. Brilliant, but the problem with this Krieger, the lower model Krieger, it's not waterproof in any kind of way. It lets water in straight away. The one, the bigger ones are, but they're, they're way too big for Enduro, they're massive. The 20, is it 25, 30 litre? So, great rucksack, but... I invested in this GoPro rucksack, which has got a similar sort of system. It's not quite as good as the, uh, it's got a chest sort of strap and a uh, waist strap, but it's as comfortable as the Krieger. But the great thing is, you can see by the zips, I'll try and open it if I can, with one hand. But it's so waterproof, it's got all these waterproof compartments in it. Oh, it's brilliant. And this, this section here, if I can open it, you can fit a set of goggles in there, so you can take two pairs of goggles out. But so yes, guys, I've worn this rucksack in some really wet weather. I haven't taken it to Wales yet. That'll be the next time we go. Uh, but it's never let any water in. Yeah, it's very padded. It's got these little sort of honeycomb bits to let some of the airflow around your back and this little gap here. But yeah, I'm not sure what it's actually called, but it's just a GoPro rucksack. It's even got a it's even got a GoPro mount on the uh, on the which I wouldn't use, but on the uh, on the strap. So yeah, totally totally waterproof rucksack. It's about 120 quid. I got it second hand. I think the person worn it once, but eBay is brilliant for stuff like this. So yeah, it, it's it's superb. It can fit. It's about a 20 litre. I think it's a big old rucksack really. I'm gonna load it up, but you don't have to put too much in it if you don't want to. It's been brilliant. Uh, one thing to mention guys, we were off to Wales in about uh, three weeks time, but obviously that's been cancelled because the company have shut down the barn. We've moved it to, to September, so we're going in September. Uh, any of you guys that I've invited along, I'll give you the dates to that at another time, but we'll probably go and have some weekend trips in Wales over the summer. That's what we'll probably do if everything opens up as it should do by early summer, by sort of June time. We'll see. 
I'll see you guys. No riding in Wales for us next month. But do you know what? After being stuck inside for so long, even riding the local trails will be great. You know, I'm, I'm not going to moan again about going down the fens that is flat and, you know, boring and whatever. And we'll do Thetford and stuff. So we've got a few enduro tracks that we're going to go to as well. That's coming up when everything gets sorted out. So, uh, yeah, it's exciting. I uh, just want to get out of the house and get riding. Wear, you know, wear this gear, not look at it. I want to wear it. I'm going to wash some of it now. Because I found out I left it dirty last time. So I need to give it a wash. Alright guys, I hope this has been of some use to some of you. It's a bit boring. I'm just trying to think of videos to make. If you can think of anything you want me to make a video of, I'm not going to do uh, a year in the life of my 300 TPI yet. I'm waiting for its first service. Get that done, then I'll have to do a video on, my, on that. That could be a month or so away, so I can't do that. Uh, I could do a video of my Dainese road bike gear, if anyone's interested in that. I've had that a couple of years. I could chat about that, but yeah, I'm running out of ideas, guys, so any suggestions would be very welcome. Anyway, all right, guys, keep safe out there. Any questions as ever, give us a shout, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Look!